I am. Hi. Right. <laughs> Good morning. I am Debbie Fries, your rock star realtor. I welcome to today's real estate informational seminar brought to you by Austin Lawrence, your mountain biking mortgage loan originator with Pacific Wholesale Mortgage, NMLS number 225079, and myself. I am Debbie Fries, DRE number 02060256. Um, why do I call myself a rock star realtor? Primarily because I'm a great listener and I will do everything in my power to understand your needs and desires and make your home buying dreams come true. I make music, but more about that later. I was once a, a first time home buyer and I understand how confusing and daunting the process can be. And I'll be happy to represent you in a most professional and caring manner. But first, there are a few things we need to talk about. A few weeks ago, Austin and I were talking about first time, we were talking with a first time home buyer and she asked us how we got paid. Um, it was at that moment that we both realized that not everyone's familiar with the world of real estate and how this all works. So we decided that one of our topics with our informational seminars would be how all this works. And um, Austin's going to talk more about the details later, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about buyer representation agreements. Um, they help formalize the process of working with you. Um, so you might ask yourself, well, why would I want to sign an agreement that limits me to one realtor working with one person? Um, to put it bluntly, we don't get paid unless you there's a transaction that closes escrow. Um, and a lot of times um, buyers are just looking or they're really not pre-qualified and we don't really know what it is exactly they're looking for, what they're qualified to buy. And um, we're just using up a lot of everyone's time to show you homes that might not be appropriate. Um, for you. So this buyer's representation agreement is a legal document that formalizes your working relationship with a particular buyer's representative and it details what services you're entitled to and what your buyer's representation, uh, what your buyer's representative actually expects from you in return. Um, this is a two-way street. Um, it's not required by law, but it's very common for professional services such as contractors, lawyers, consultants, accountants, and doctors. And um, so it's really not that uh, uncommon of a thing. It is relatively new in the world of real estate, but um, it is there and available for us to use. And with the buyer's agreement, I'm committing to you in writing to look out for your interests. The forms establish a mutual agreement to work for and with one another. Um, the realtor's hands, are, especially the buyer's agent, the hands are, our hands are tied unless we uh, can actually know what you're looking for and whether or not you're committed to working with us. There are certain things that we need from you, such as pre-qualification from your lender, from um, with proof of funds, especially in this market. Some properties will not even allow us to uh, have an appointment with you to see the property unless all of those things are in place ahead of time. Um, what you should know is that as a buyer, you normally don't have an out-of-pocket cost to pay the buyer's representative. The compensation is generally paid by the seller, not 100% of the time, but um, generally speaking. Um, and you as a buyer don't pay anything for the broker services. Um, and in these agreements, there are three different types, and I'm going to talk about each type, but they can be as long or as short of, as we both agree. Um, and this little tip I found in researching this topic that some brokers may prefer to start with a short period of time to get to know the buyers better and find out if the buyer is serious, qualified, and compatible. So those are the three different things, whether or not you're serious, whether or not you're qualified, and whether or not we can work together as people, because that's important too. The scope of the agreements can be broad, 
For example, it could be all single family residential properties in the county, or it can list only one particular property. Now, as I said, there are three different types of uh, representation agreements. There's an exclusive agreement that says that this broker is entitled to be paid if the buyer purchases property meeting the criteria set out in paragraph 1A, which is basically the address of the property. The um, non-exclusive agreement provides that the broker is only entitled to compensation if the buyer broker introduced the property to a buyer or otherwise acted on the buyer's behalf for that property. And then um, the one that most commonly is used is the non-exclusive and not for compensation. Um, that, that it's not exclusive to a particular property and it's not uh, requirement requiring any particular um, compensation for you. And of course, these buyer's rep representation agreements can always be modified. They can be for a short period of time, long period of time, um, but it does protect you in terms of we're working for you um, and we're committed to doing our best for you. On the other hand, there are some things that you also need to do. Now, Austin's gonna go a little further with explaining how this all works and I'll be here at the end of wrap, to wrap up. So take it away, Austin. Thank you, Debbie. You're welcome. Um, so yeah, I think Debbie's getting on to something that can sound a little complicated when it comes to getting into this process, but in reality, um, a buyer's agreement kind of streamlines that process and really outlines the agreement and the relationship between the realtor and the client. So absolutely, this is something that I would encourage you to do. Um, I am specifically going to get into some of the details about the numbers because obviously being a mortgage um, broker, uh, part of the finance side, I'm kind of the numbers guy. So what I wanted to do is get into some of those details and explain as through some examples how this works with regards to the compensation that is part of that transaction process for especially realtors, but also myself, um, the actual loan officer involved in the process. So uh, I think Debbie did a really good job of introducing um, this process and how it kind of works on a formal level. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and take you along the process. Um, I use a PowerPoint, so give me a second. Let me punch that up for you. Uh, just keeps me a little bit more uh, accountable to the information. So let me get that going really quick. And there we go. Okay. So uh, again, um, Debbie is with Berkshire Hathaway, uh, the Drysdale um, Properties Division, and I am with Pacific Wholesale Mortgage. Uh, my name is Austin Lawrence, the Mountain Biking MLO, uh, NMLS number 225079. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get into this PowerPoint. I'm just give me a second just to get this thing up. And little technical difficulties. <laughs> So uh, give me a second. Let's see if I can punch that up again for us here. Okay. Yep. Not getting my PowerPoint out. All right, maybe doing it without the PowerPoint. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, hopefully the PowerPoint will come up um, as we get going here. Uh, okay, I'm seeing it coming up now. So the real question that we're going to be addressing in this particular PowerPoint is how, how do realtors get paid? How do we get paid? Um, and this is somewhat of a complicated kind of question, um, but the easy way for you to interpret it is just simply this. Um, we are not paid unless there is a completed transaction in this process, meaning you have got into escrow and actually closed escrow. So uh, knowing that, what you would kind of interpret that as is basically you're not going to be paying any out-of-pocket expenses for your realtor or your loan officer. Um, you will have some out-of-pocket expenses being that there are some uh, outlying aspects of the transaction process like appraisals, inspections, etc. But in the grand scheme of things, 
you're not really coming out of pocket with any money unless this transaction is completed. And then I'm going to be kind of addressing how that pay works with regards to this. And it looks like I'm not able to get my um, system up and running to be able to bring you through that. So I'm going to kind of move on. Um, so, oh, actually, boop, there it goes. So um, what we are addressing here, and I'm going to just do a simple version. So if you bear with me, um, what is the difference between a real estate agent and a mortgage loan originator? A real estate agent helps you to buy and sell your real estate property like a home. They can represent you as a buyer's agent, seller's agent, or both. We were talking about buyer's agent um, specifically, and I'll give you an example of that in this PowerPoint. Uh, the goal is to help the homeowner or home buyer with their real estate transaction. They help with logistics of the sale, buying and or both selling, and guide you through the legal contracts and what your rights are as a client purchasing a home. A mortgage loan originator um, usually works pretty closely with the real estate agent, um, and they help the client to qualify or to select to complete a loan for real property. The MLO works in association or directly for a lender or a bank securing that loan. Um, and so knowing that, uh, I want to kind of get into some of the specifics. So how does the real, real estate agent like Debbie get paid? Um, she is usually paid, and this is um, the kind of the general aspect of it, uh, commission on the closed transaction. So real estate agents are paid commissions on the proceeds from a closed transaction. There are two sides to the pay for agents, seller and buyer. Both the seller's agent and a buyer's agent will receive a commission. And why am I bringing that up? Because the idea of where that money comes from is something that we're going to get into right now. So most of the time when a home is being sold, the actual person who's selling the home will work with the real estate agent or their representative and they will decide on a commission to actually pay to sell this home. That commission, let's just say, is going to be from 2 to 6%. Um, the standard is usually 6%. And then that is split between a buyer's agent and a seller's agent. So an example on a 6% commission, each agent will receive 3% of that transaction amount. So based on a loan amount, what would happen is the a uh, seller would actually offer 6% commission based on that purchase price. And then that would be split between the buyer's and the seller's agent. And that's determined by the actual client and the realtor. So usually that's a 3% split. So the incentive for the buyer's agent is they're going to get a 3% commission by bringing that client to that particular home. Um, seller's agent and buyer's agent. A seller agent will determine how much money will be paid in the transaction, and the seller of the property, the homeowner, will determine a percentage of that sale price that will be paid to the agents involved. And then again, usually this is between four and six percent. Buyer's agents are paid based on the commission offered by the seller of the real property. Most sellers offer one and a half to three percent for bringing a buyer to the home, and that's kind of what I was just addressing a second ago. Okay, so. Um, if you have questions or I'm kind of moving too fast, please put your comments um, down in that comment section. And I will definitely get back to them or Debbie within the uh, next 24 hours. So um, here I want to talk about some of the numbers. So let's say a sale price of 500000 So commission that's offered, the, the actual seller, the client, and the realtor have decided they're going to offer 6%. So of that, they're offering the selling agent or listing agent, 3% to sell the home, and the buyer's agent, 3% to bring the client to buy the home. So the total cost from the seller would be 6% or $30,000. So that's where that money comes from, and that's how the, the actual realtor is paid in this particular transaction, or the realtors, depending if you have dual representation or individual representation. Uh, I wanna give another example. Let's say the commission's a little bit lower. The client and the actual realtor have decided on a 5% commission split. So that would be, let's say, 2.5% to the seller, 2.5% to the buyer. So the buyer brings a client in, and that buyer or buyer's agent would then receive 2.5%, or in this case, um, actually it's $12,000. Sorry, my numbers are on there. Um, so you do not pay the buyer's agent. 
um, the seller will pay from the commission of the sale based on the purchase price. So how much commission did the seller's agent receive based on the total commission? Um, we're going to assume the same amount, two and a half percent. Okay. So um, hopefully that's clear. Um, I usually address staging because why I wanted to bring this up is this is probably one of those things where you're going to ask, well, who pays for that staging of the house? Usually this is an agreement between the selling agent and the, or the realtor and the actual selling client, meaning the homeowner who's selling the home. And they will usually pay money out of pocket, uh, depending on how that representation works to go ahead and pay to stage the home. Um, and we've found that staging will definitely increase the purchase price of the home, meaning you're gonna get more money out of the home if you actually stage it rather than just putting it on the market and allowing people to come through and see the home in its present condition, whatever that may be. Okay, so um, there are some other things that you wanna be aware of. Obviously, appraisal, setting up your home to try to maximize you know, what you're gonna get out of the home and what the appraiser's gonna actually give you for value. So here's some appraisal tips as well, in case you are going through this PowerPoint and you wanted to kind of know, well, how do I maximize what I'm gonna get for my home because you're on that actual selling side. So um, a home inspection report, I'm not really gonna address, but this would be something that you probably wanna get in order in advance. So you kind of know what um, expenses are gonna go into it outside of the commissions, because um, this would probably be something that's gonna happen on both sides. Um, otherwise, Buyer's contract. So this is what that buyer's contract that we were talking about, our buyer's agreement. Um, it would basically be a formal document that you would actually be using to um, come up with kind of the guidelines between what um, you are going to be doing as a, you know, a, a person purchasing the home, as well as what the real estate agent representing you will do with regards to uh, representing you, as well as negotiating uh, the best situation for you with this transaction. So those agreements are very important. They do protect the clients. So um, otherwise, I want to just address one thing, which is probably not on the top of the list. But obviously, if uh, you knew that loan officers are getting paid out of your pocket, you'd be very concerned. Uh, what you need to understand with this part of the process is, again, loan officers are very rarely paid through the borrower. So that is an option. So I wanna address that a little bit, but most of the time they're paid as a commission from the lending institution. So if they go to a particular bank, let's say United Wholesale Mortgage as a lender, and I get a particular loan for you, that lender will then usually pay the loan officer. There is a variation of that, uh, depending on kind of the back end side of the loan, which a borrower can pay, and that's usually termed an origination fee. So uh, the good news for clients looking at this is there is some structure in place to prevent you from being taken advantage of in this situation. Um, and that is a high cost loan. We'll have an um, basic a limit of 3% that you can be charged of the purchase price from the loan officer. So that does protect you as well. So if you're kind of doing the math here, how much percentage would be paid off of the actual commission um, is something that will be at maximum 3%. Um, and usually you're not gonna notice those costs because they're gonna be telling you based on what their commission is with the bank, what that rate is that they're gonna be offering you. So I know this is a little layered, kind of deep into the weeds, but let me give you a visual just to kind of help you out here. Um, the example of this is what we call the yield spread premium. Um, and I don't want to get too heavy into those, but let's say this is an example of a rate sheet. Uh, we're looking at the rate sheet. What we'll have here is all of the rates. And then what you'll have here is based on how many days you lock the loan in for, let's say you lock the loan for 30 days, um, 20 days, 10 days, what you're going to have is a commission that's going to be received based on that rate. So let's say you offer a rate of five and a quarter, and this is from a couple of days ago, uh, rates had went up at that point, um, you're going to be getting a commission back of 3.201%. Anything over that 3% will then be given back to the client, but we're paid through the bank and the rate that's being offered. So 
for all practical purposes, what you need to know is you are not paying the loan officer. The loan officer will be paid by the bank where they secure that particular loan through. And they can go over those specific details with you. Um, but what I wanted to show you is there are different actual um, uh, commissions that are paid based on the lock. So this is why when you have a conversation with your loan officer, often they'll tell you, well, it's important to know when that lock period is going to be. Are we going to lock for 20 days, 30 days, 45 days? And here's a good option. Um, we can do with some of my lenders what's called a lock and shop, which is a if you have a property, you're not sure of the actual address, you're just looking in a particular area, we can actually lock you in in a particular rate for 45, 60, up to 90 days to guarantee that rate, especially with a market like this is pretty volatile. So for all practical purposes, how do realtors get paid? Let me explain it to you in a simple fact. They're paid through somebody else. So as a buyer, you're not gonna have to worry about that. As a seller, and this is a good conversation to have with your realtor, you're going to be determining how much percentage of your sale is going to go towards commission. And usually that does not exceed 6%. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of how we are paid in these transactions. And I think the main thing that you would want to know is, am I coming out of pocket to pay these people? And the answer is no. Um, I always try to give you kind of a tidbit or just a gem that you can use. And I always want to um, tell you that on bankrate.com, there's an option for you to run some of these calculations, especially mortgage payment, commissions, any of that kind of stuff. So if you go to bankrate.com, you'll find they have a mortgage calculator section and they have a bunch of variations. So you can kind of play with some of these numbers as well. All right. So um, just to review really quick, there's some differences between these. Um, what you would need to know is there's basically three types of relationships that you're going to have dual agency a buyer representation and a seller representation. Those would be contracts. Debbie can explain these a little bit more in detail. Um, with mortgage brokers, as it relates to being paid, um, you have your yield spread premium, uh, which is the lender's way of paying, and then there's borrower paid. This is a different variation I can discuss with you individually, where because of the program or constraints of the situation that we're in with getting you that loan, we've decided to actually have you pay that money um, up front, and that will be as an origination fee to pay the loan officer. Um, this is not that common, just to be honest with you at this point. Okay, so uh, just want to review. Uh, my name is Austin Lawrence. I'm your mountain biking MLO. Uh, my contact information is on here, and if you have any questions related to the relationship with a real estate agent, uh, please contact Debbie. She's great. She will definitely uh, go out of her way to try to help you to understand and get an answer for you. And then if you have questions related to the other side, which is getting a loan, securing a loan, or how that process works with regards to a loan for a, um, a home, a real estate property, uh, definitely you want to reach out to me because I can probably give you that information, if not uh, direct you to where you can find that information online. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. Sorry for the uh, issues with the actual uh, PowerPoint, um, but I can send that to you if you wanted to see it in further detail and go through it with you. Uh, I am going to stop right now and go ahead and move it over and pass it back on to Debbie. Great, Austin. Thank you so much. Um, so just to be clear, we don't charge an hourly fee. That was one <laughs> of the questions we had. Um, so yeah, we're not going to be sending you an invoice for our time today. And uh, speaking of today, I'm actually headed out right now to go host an open house. I hope to see you there. I'm at 1678 Devlin today in Vallejo. But if you're a buyer looking for a realtor to work with, um, I'm hoping that I'll be the person to help you find your dream home. But we'll definitely be talking about a buyer agreement. Um, with that, I believe we can sign off now and head out for our day. Hope you enjoyed our little webinar today. So we'll see you next time. What's our topic next time? Do we know? Oh, I think what the, uh, what, what is a, uh, um, escrow or we're going to get uh, into the title and some of that title. Stuff? Yeah. What's a title? What preliminary, preliminary title search? Why is it important and why do we do it? So right forward to that one. 
For sure. Well, thank you, Debbie. And you, thank you for uh, watching. We really appreciate you taking the opportunity. Um, we're going to usually have these once a month. So please join us. Um, I think these are really informative sessions and they have some great value for especially those first time home buyers that are just confused about the process and need a little bit of guidance and um, want to understand some of the terminology that goes with it too. So um, one of the things I wanted to add, which I kind of forgot just as a, a side note, I think is kind of funny. Um, we're not lawyers. We're not attorneys. We're not making you sign a contract and you have to give us a retainer. So remember, we work with you. And this is the important distinction. We really want you to be happy in this process. So the buyer agreements, all this kind of stuff we're talking about is really just let's get everything on the table, make sure we're clear on the logistics, the process, what we're doing, what our responsibilities are, and then just doing the best job we can to help you to find that home. Because exactly. after all, that's, that's our goal, and that's your goal too. Thanks, Debbie. See you next time. Best of luck on the open house. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.